Hello folks, my name is Mark Wilson and I'm the founder of AccuModo where we inspire confidence in hydraulic modeling. This tutorial is a continuation of previous tutorials. We're going through the EPNet user's manual and just doing some of the exercises to give a visual representation of the user's manual and help new users get started. Well, let's get going. One thing I didn't do on the previous tutorial is do labels. Okay. If we click on the text or add label button and then we click anywhere in the map, we can add a label. Then we have to hit enter. To make it stick. Okay. Just uh, one thing that the user's guide doesn't point out, if you go back in here to view options, you can actually toggle the display off and on. Of those labels. Remember you can press the escape key if you start digitizing something and then don't want to finish. One thing that we're going to do here, because I didn't have the uh, map and the user's guide right in front of me while I was digitizing the pipes, is got them, the IDs, a little bit wrong. I just wanted to show you that you can change those in the model pretty readily. This is actually a little bit better, easier feature than some of the commercial products where it's a little more difficult to change IDs. So I'm going to go ahead and use my selector tool. I'm going to double click. We're also talking in this tutorial about changing the attributes of each feature. So this is the first attribute we're going to change is pipe ID. I'm going to give this kind of a dummy uh, 12 ID just kind of as a placeholder so that then I can come over here and change this one to A like it's supposed to be on the drawing in EPA NAT. Let's give this one a value of 20 for right now and this one 30 now we can start changing some of these other ones I think to this one 7 this one is supposed to be 4 okay now that we've got all the pipes with the correct ID according to the quick start user guide we can go ahead and start changing some of the other attributes I'm going to refer to page 14 in the user's guide for the table of values for nodes and links we'll just start in, in link 1 and we can access the information in several different ways. We can double click on an element. This brings up this little editor and the data we're changing here is the elevation which is actually total head for a reservoir. So we're going to give that a 700. So this reservoir is a fixed boundary condition. So this if unless we give it a head pattern it will always be a boundary condition at 700 uh, and then the units of length. In our case we're using feet. Now we'll go ahead and change node 2 which is a junction and it has an elevation of 700 and a demand of 0. 700 and a base demand of 0 so we'll leave that and you get the picture. I'll do the rest of the nodes offline. I'll just show some links here. Link number one is 3,000 feet long, 14 inches diameter. Fourteen inches diameter and a roughness of 100. I think we're all good to go on that one and you can get the picture of how easy it is to change values. Well, just let me show you one other thing here. If you single click on an element and then you click the edit button, it does the same thing. It brings up this little editor window. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video right now while I finish up.
So I've entered all the data for the pipes and the junctions and the reservoir. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish up with doing the pump and the tank. So we're going to give it an initial level of 4. And all these level initial, minimum, and maximum are measured above the tank base level. So this elevation, this is the base level, or you could consider it the bottom of the tank that will have some interesting ramifications when we try to model hydropneumatic tanks as a tall skinny tank or elevated storage uh, and we'll cover that in, a, in the advanced videos. But for now we'll just uh, keep working through this tutorial. Minimum level we're going to leave at 0. Maximum level 20 and a diameter of 60. And again, we're in English units, so that would be in feet. Okay, now for the pump. We're going to use a design point or a single point curve for this pump. So all we really need in here is the curve ID. And to create that curve, all we have to do is go over here into our browser, do curve, new and it kind of gives us a starting ID here we can change this if we want but since we named it in the pump data as a curve ID 1 we're gonna stick with that of course and this is a pump curve and all we have to do is type in our data points here 600 GPM at 150 feet of head now when we only have a single point in here, it gives us an, a nice curve there based on a default equation that's built into EPANet. If we were to add more points, as soon as we do that, it's just gonna, gonna do a uh, point to point and then EPANet will interpolate values between all the different points. So I could put zero flow here and we can do 200 and that will do us a nice three point curve. Uh, several ways you can accomplish that. Well that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you subscribe to the playlist to see the whole series of these tutorials. Also and watch for the EPNet advanced videos that I'll be posting soon. And good luck on your modeling.